Eccles Together in Health is a project with local people and primary care teams in Eccles, Salford, working in equal partnership, making small improvements with general practices and learning how best to work together. What were the issues in general practice and how did we know this? Last year we spoke to 48 GPs, staff and local people in one-to-one -one interviews and Vox Pops to find out what they felt about GP services in the area. When I rang yesterday uh, asking for an appointment for Monday, they said that I couldn't get one for two weeks, so that was not so good. Last month we offered 4,000 appointments, over 4,000 appointments, but 400 of those people were wasted because people didn't turn up. But that could be 400 more people seen, like, that's, that's excess for people. Basically, uh, not to come with a cold, really. Not to come with the flu or the cold. I mean, it's common sense that you've just got to stay in and, and wear it out, you know, so. I think, obviously, we're all very, very, very busy. Um, so I think to keep us sort of online and, and kind of efficient as possible, we need to pull in other uh, healthcare providers. Um, in particular pharmacists, which is something we're, we're trying to do here. I suppose a lot of it comes down to public education, um, patient education. Um, so I suppose Department of Health and getting more people out there to talk to people and tell them what's appropriate. Well I think if people perhaps took the time to sit and all come together and discuss and then perhaps put it to the people who make the decisions, you know, that's what needs to happen. We set up a project steering group consisting of equal number of local people and primary care staff. Together we looked at common themes coming from videoed interviews that we did with staff, patients and people in the community. Coming to the steering group, I think it's been informative and it gives you an idea of what local people think about you know, the practices and the chemists and so on. It has been informative um, and I think it's been there's been a lot of helpful ideas, you know, that you wouldn't normally have thought of because we're interacting with other practices. Basically, staff were worried about managing demand and patients were worried about getting an appointment, which are two sides of the same coin. When people are phoning up for appointments, it's always first thing and it's so busy. You're trying to get the phone answered as fast as you can. You haven't always got time to start chatting and explaining about a minor ailment scheme while somebody's on the phone for an appointment because the next person's already ringing. You know, and you do get a lot of complaints about not answering the phone fast enough, so you are pressured. So we looked at successful studies where demand had been effectively managed and where staff and local people could each contribute their ideas. We came up with eight ideas to help improve patient access to services and then we asked staff and local people to vote on which ideas they'd like to work on together. We then chose the top three ideas and set up action groups. First of all, we've been using a Plan, Do, Study, Act or PDSA type of approach, which has only been about very small tests of change, micro tests, which we then learn from and build up and build up. One, text messaging. We knew from the evidence that we could reduce missed appointments by as much as 25% if we got the right wording on a text message appointment reminder. I started in Morrison's Cafe actually, there's myself and Heather Henry from Unlimited Potential and we had a patient with us as well and between the three of us we looked at text messages that we'd received from other businesses um, with regards to sort of appointments and, and people attending their appointments, hairdressers and dentists and how they'd sent out text messages. And so it was with myself and patient we compiled uh, the first of the many text messages till we got the sort of definitive text. Two, encouraging use of the chemist. So the second action project was about using word of mouth in the community of Winton to let people know about going to the chemist and not the GP if you had a minor ailment such as a sore throat or a rash. A show of hands in community group meetings revealed that only three in ten local people knew about the minor ailment scheme. As well as talking to groups, staff and families helped the project manager and nurse Heather to write and then read a children's story where the hero of the story was a little boy called Billy. Billy knew to take his sister to the chemist to have her rash treated. Mums met with the local chemist too so they could better understand how the minor ailment scheme worked 
They also gave the chemist, who is also chair of the local pharmaceutical committee, hints and tips on how to make the scheme better for busy families. So this project was about not only how we make small changes to improve general practice by working together, it was also about learning how to work together. 3. Improving self-management of children's asthma We thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could reduce asthma symptoms in children? Um, because they're high users of general practice and indeed A&E when things don't go right. And to use it in a fun way, so could we do asthma parties? So the idea very much came from an evidence base about if you see people with the same condition, um, plus their parents, plus their siblings, could they not only learn from each other, um, but uh, as well as learning from um, a clinician, but at the same time um, it's about having fun and destigmatizing asthma. You know school is the common denominator for all children and parents are usually very happy to come into school they're comfortable going to school so I think to begin with going into that sort of environment makes people feel confident and happy and able to understand and learn about asthma and that's really the way that we're going to reduce GP consultations and hospital admissions. I think that um, it's been really good that the uh, steering group has had a real input in what goes on with the project, so it's been influenced from the ground up. And I think that that's evident in itself by a couple of things which I've brought to the project, um, a few things to do with the story and some of the some of the uh, stuff to do with the asthma party. When the group first met we didn't have all practices represented um, and also we, we, we only had two or three patients. Um, the meetings since then have been much better attended and, and we're getting a real cross-section. So we're getting you know, practice staff, uh, receptionists, administrators, practice managers, we're getting some clinicians, um, you know, re really important to get a good mix. And then with patients likewise we're getting young and old and we're getting people who might not normally get involved in this kind of work as well as some people who are experienced in you know, developing patient practice uh, partnership work. The members of the project are working hard so I think the project is very important because it builds communications to let people cooperate and to make new relations and to work together to improve health in Eccles and so forth. What's been good is that it's helped us as the healthcare professionals to learn about what the patients actually require and what their opinion of it is as well. It's very different if we're asking them whilst they're in the pharmacy or they're in the GP practice what they think about a service. Being able to, to go to somewhere like the steering group and, or to, pay, uh, to parent groups at, at Westwood Park School is a, it's a much more open and relaxed environment. We've both taken time out to go and, go, go and chat over a cup of coffee and, and we really come back from that with some fresh ideas. And, and we understand what we're doing well and what we can focus on a little bit more. For me there's three key learning points. Firstly was the use of video techniques and early on in the project we were very successful in engaging both practice staff, the patients and local people in gathering some very powerful stories around uh, general practice. Secondly, the steering group consistent and persistent engagement efforts were required to get that off the ground. And thirdly, community assets. We've successfully gone out there and found local people, pharmacies, local schools to help us bring meaning to those action groups. It's like the minor ailment scheme. Yeah. Nobody really knew about it. If you're not poorly and you don't go to the chemist and you're not going into your doctor's surgery, you wouldn't know. Well, I wouldn't know, but it's only working at a doctor's that you know. And I really think that if we're going to make key changes to people's health, then we've got to look at more uh, effective ways of working together. You know, if we, if we look at, say, you know, the big supermarkets, they spend a lot of money looking at uh, research around uh, how, how their customers you know, want to engage with them 
and I think the NHS we could learn a lot from that. I think it's really really important that we have more projects like this in this local area because I think that we do have we do have a, you know, a, a big issue. So I think you know the key thing across the whole of the, the health and social care spectrum is, is closer partnership working. So that it's our service, it's not the doctor's service, it's not the patient's service, we own the service together and, and jointly we try and make things better.